Because I am from the English West Country, mine is, I am reliably informed, retroflex. But for most people in Britain and North America, it'll probably be post alveolar, although for some younger Brits it might be labiodental, while older Brits might have an alveolar flap. I am of course talking about the pronunciation of the letter R, but if you're watching this video you may be one of the surprisingly large number of language students looking for tips on how to pronounce the German R. I like to make my videos interesting for other people as well, so I am going to go into some detail. But if you're here because you're learning German, then let me begin by setting your mind at rest. Unless you are an actor or a spy, you do not need to get the pronunciation perfect. You only need to be understandable. Let's begin with a video that went viral a couple of years ago. Moving MRI images of a man talking. This was a sensation because up until then MRI imaging could only produce still images. This was the first time that we could actually see in real time what happens inside when we talk. And fortunately for us, because this video was made by the Max Planck Institute, the man is talking German. Man erkennt dabei Form und Lageveränderung des Zungenrückens, des Zungengrundes. So, this is what our mouth and nasal cavities look like in cross-section, and we can label some of the uh, <coughs> articulatory organs. Uh, yeah, there are going to be some technical terms in this video because this is science. Okay, so the basics. Consonants are produced by putting different articulatory organs into contact in a way that somehow obstructs the flow of air. And we can give these sounds complicated names that explain exactly how they're made. For example, if I say ba ba, then I make the consonant sound by putting my lips together, completely stopping the airflow for a split second, and using my vocal cords. That is a voiced bilabial stop. If I don't use my vocal cords, then I get pa pa, which is an unvoiced bilabial stop. Another thing that I want to very briefly explain is the International Phonetic Alphabet. If you've never seen it before, it's a system used to exactly write any sound that is possible to make. If I write this, this is a phonemic transcription, and it means the R sound, whatever that sound is in your language or dialect. But if I write this, this is now a phonetic transcription, and it is a very specific sound. This is an alveolar trill, and it goes Remember how at the beginning of the video I talked about different ways of pronouncing R in English? Well, here are their phonetic transcriptions in the International Phonetic Alphabet. There are different pronunciations depending on dialect, and these are only some of them. Well, the same is true in German. I mean, look at this. Well, you don't need all of this, so we can simplify matters a great deal. There are three main pronunciations, two consonants and one vowel. Yes, in German, the R can sometimes be a vowel, but we'll get to that. The two main consonant pronunciations are these, and the speaker in that MRI video uses both of them, one when he's speaking normally, and the other when he's demonstrating the sound. Here he is speaking normally, and this is the R sound right here. This is the pronunciation that you'll normally be taught at school, a uvula trill. It's made by putting the back of the tongue against the uvula, which is that fleshy thing hanging down at the back of your mouth, and allowing the uvula to vibrate, like this. In this case, the speaker is saying the word Herren. Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren. Near the end of the video, the speaker demonstrates some individual sounds, including the R sound but it's a very different R sound. R. This is an alveolar trill made by putting the tip of the tongue against the alveolar ridge and letting the tongue vibrate. R. So which pronunciation should you choose? Well, the short answer is whichever is easiest for you. Honestly, it doesn't matter. People will understand you. The uvula trill. R 
is used in ordinary standard federal high German. It's what you normally learn at school. The alveolar trill is common in Switzerland, Austria and southern parts of Germany, but it's sometimes also used by older people in northern parts of Germany as well. This is because the alveolar trill was used in what was called Bühnendeutsch, an artificial dialect used by stage actors at a time before sound systems were common in theatres, and so it became associated with the educated middle classes. So if you find it difficult to roll your R at the back of the mouth, Try rolling it at the front instead. You might sound a bit southern or a bit posh, but people will overlook that if it's obvious that German is not your native language. So what about the R as a vowel? This is a special case, but it is very common in many dialects in Germany and Austria. It happens when the R is at the end of a stressed syllable. For example, take this word. Now I pronounce it Uhrwerk. The second R you can hardly hear at all because that syllable isn't stressed, but the first R is a vowel. Listen again. Uhrwerk. Uhrwerk. This is a near open central vowel, which means that it's pronounced by pulling the tongue down a bit, but not pulling it back or pushing it forwards. It's very similar to the sound that linguists call a schwa, which is a. Uh. That's the sound of the first syllable of the English word about. This happens at the end of a syllable, when there is a vowel before the R, but not one after it. For example, gehör. Hören. Tor. Tore. But as I said, don't overthink this. Your pronunciation doesn't need to be perfect. It just has to be good enough for people to understand what you're trying to say. In summary, you can roll your R at the back of the mouth or the front of the mouth, whichever is easier for you, it doesn't matter. And if it comes after a vowel but not before another vowel, you can pronounce it uh. Generally speaking, my advice to students of any language is don't worry too much about the pronunciation. You can understand other people when they speak your language in a foreign accent. Other people will understand you when you speak their language in a foreign accent. Concentrate not on perfection, but on communication. Unless, of course, you are a spy.